got their book. <laughs> See, I'd get trouble. Yeah, you would. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, <laughs> she was talking to you. Morning, you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. He's not here with us. <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I got to gather. I got to gather my thoughts. Uh, just a reminder. We take. Yeah. We're, just, just go. You know, I could have stayed at home and got this abuse. I didn't have to come here. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been near as much fun for us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Why did I close the first <laughs> Okay, remember, we're taking up a love offering in honor of Mother's Day to get the additional uh, medical equipment for the pregnancy center. The goal is $5,000, and it says here we're getting close. Central Students Senior Sunday is today. Uh, just a reminder, the Senior Car Parade will be this afternoon on Center Street at 530. So plan your route accordingly if you're, co if you're coming to church tonight for small classes and, and men's and women's prayer group. So you'll probably have to come in a back way because they'll probably have the street blocked off. Man, listen, I've got to come in the back way anywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ought to know. I do. I'm right there with you. Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, May the 24th, is our monthly mm -hmm. fellowship meal. Uh, <laughs> tacos are on the menu. Tacos. 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 The next PAL support group meeting is Thursday, May 25th at 630 in observance of Memorial Day weekend, we'll not have any p.m. services on Sunday the 28th, and the office will be closed on Monday the 29th. We have a wedding shower honoring Brittany Rogers and Tanner Rogers on Sunday, June 4th, right after the morning worship fellowship. The couple is registered at Amazon. Boy, oh, I hate I'm going to miss this. Men's Fish Fry Fellowship, June 9th, 7 p.m. at the Preacher's House. I hear catfish is on the menu. Brad, Brad's not going to be there, so we need some volunteers to be a good part. I'm not going to be there either. So. Well, I said, now we got two people we I, I said something to the preacher the other day. He said something about the fish fry, and I said, well, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in Florida. And he looked at me and said, what? You're supposed to be cooking. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they, they wouldn't ask me to cook, so I'm going to say. I think you. Know. <laughs> We're not having an A. Huh? We're not having an A. <laughs> uh, vacation VBS is June the 11th through the 14th. Uh, if you have somebody that's uh, going to be there, you can register online. And uh, if you want to volunteer, there's volunteer forms on the back table. Uh, T shirt pre orders are today. So if you're planning on volunteering or being part of it and you want or you just want a t-shirt, you need to get that order into them today. Central Students Camp Registration is live. You can go online now and register if you've got somebody going to that. Mark Lowry Hometown Weekend will be October 13th and 14th. If you've got uh, questions about that, there's a scan code on the bulletin. Go to that and get your tickets for that. VBS back Baskets. We decided we were going to do movie night again. Yes, we decided. Yes, we did. Um, so that's anything. Movie theater gift card, Google Play, Prime Video gift card, Redbox gift card, fast food gift card, ice cream gift card. There's a whole list of things that ice, we can ice get. Ice cream? The, yeah. We'll keep that for ourselves. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Just listening. So yeah, anyway, we there's a... We need to see what Brad turns in as compared yeah. to what was given. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the list. You, and anything other than this, that you, if it pertains to movie night, you can bring it. And I'm going to put this as a sign-up sheet I'm going to put over here on the table. So this way everybody can see what everybody else is bringing. And so just as you won't just fill that out 
and we'll put a basket together for it. Uh oh. No, I told y'all to, not him. Where's he playing? I don't know, but he's right. No, I, I, if, if I did that, I would keep him. <laughs> I suppose we'll keep I, him. I, just put, I put bottles of rocks on there. Did you get any prayer requests? Yeah, uh, that was that's a good that's a good question. I I sent out a, a bunch of prayer requests. How many looked at them? I mean, everybody should have got them. If you didn't get them, I I need to we need to check your email address. But I mean, everybody that's in here shows to have an email address in our our system. So. Um, the only other thing that I would add to that is we got a we got a text message from Mark this morning, uh, and Francis had to go to the emergency room, and from the emergency room to Methodist Hospital, I guess downtown. No, no Clear Lake. Clear Lake. But that's even better. Yeah. Uh, if we need to go see her, it's better. It's not better for her to be. I, I don't know. That didn't sound good. Any, anyway, something to do with her heart. They're monitoring her heart. Okay. The blood work showed. How, uh, how yeah. I don't know that. Hmm. Okay. That don't make sense. But. Yeah. It, it, they measure for if you have a heart attack, you've got antigens in your blood. Ah, uh, okay. Now that's some level of antigens. That's right. I'm, I remember that from when I had mine. Sherry went to the dermatologist last week and they took several papers off her body. And one came back with melanoma on her shoulder. So she is now having a final surgery. And they said they'll have to sure. quite, My sister, she is. Yeah, no, I had to think about it. Yeah, quite a bit uh, off of her shoulder. So we just need to remember her. Mm. And never quits. <laughs> no. That's okay. No. That's no, okay. it's an insidious disease. Yeah, yes. And I didn't email you, but I, had, but I just found out unspoken prayer for my Grandson. Okay. Uh, I guess with Melissa, you sent me that list, didn't you? I think you did. People need to be on the prayer list. Yeah. <laughs> hey, li listen, I mean, my my phone, I turn my phone off and it sounds, I ought to, what I ought to do is put some like a Southern Gospel ringtone on there because it goes off constantly. <laughs> It just don't stop. Um, oh, I thought I, I thought I couldn't tell if he was praying or sleeping. Both. <laughs> Alan, if I was sleeping, you know. <laughs> right now, okay? Y'all pr promise me y'all don't have a heart attack, okay? Melissa, would you pray for us, please? Yeah. <laughs> Melissa? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa? Yeah. Melissa, yeah. <laughs> but Melissa don't have a heart attack. <laughs> I have 
I have a bunch of verses today that I didn't give to Brad. And that comes from the fact of um, not, not looking at the lesson a whole lot because when I looked at it Monday, it's not a new, it's, it's not a new lesson. Uh, but over the, over, the past, over the week, things were coming at me in different directions. So I started making notes. And then today, this morning, Daphne woke me up like at 4.30 this morning for whatever reason. He probably deserved it. Uh, you're in charge. <laughs> I, I think I woke her up. <laughs> but anyway, when I when I started thinking about it, I just had a, a bunch of stuff come into my head, which is scary. But uh, and there wasn't no point in me trying trying to let Brad know like how I got like five or six verses today that that go with the lesson. So. Um, I didn't. I even thought about making copies of it, of of, of it, and then you can hand it to you if you wanted it. But hey, if you wanted it, it's, it's right here. I'll give it to you, or you can. If you want them? If you really want them, you can write them down. We'll go through them. But with that said, um, Kim, would you mind reading um, Ephesians six ten through eight, please? Ten through thirteen, please. Is that boy, that good? You like that? <laughs> ten through thirteen. Billy. You got my problem. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You want to do the next one? No, no. I'm just thinking Kim is fired up this morning. Billy must have did something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But she is fired up. That's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah, put up the next ones. What is it? Danny, you want to read those three for us, please? 14 through 16. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, which ye have, which ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Tony, you want to get those last two, six, seventeen, and eighteen? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So I have a word running through my head, and knowing me, it's not the right word, so I'll defer to Tony or whoever feels the need to correct me. Um, I want to use the word metaphor, and I don't know if that is the correct word, but he's using an, maybe an analogy. Maybe that's a good word. And every time I, every time I read these verses about the armor, uh, the lesson, the lesson made the guy that wrote the lesson made this comment that when Paul Paul is sitting in prison writing this, and more than likely. He being a Roman citizen all of his life, uh, he knew what those soldiers wore. And so what he did was took, what is it, six things, five things? How many pieces we got there? However many pieces of armor that we have, he made an analogy, a metaphor. Is a metaphor work? No, not really. Who said no? Who's idea? Oh, what is it, Melissa? Illustration. 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 For example. Okay, I like it. I like it. <laughs> the Roman, what was one of the most prominent figures of that day and time? A Roman soldier. A Roman yeah. soldier stood for strength. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact that he was probably looking at, in prison, he was probably looking at them every day. Yeah. I, I kind of said that kind of slow about seeing him in prison because I think, you know, it's a very, very good possibility that when you walked through the main doors of that prison, and maybe in those corridors even, that you'd have saw, you, 
you would have saw a fully dressed out Roman soldier, but more than likely you probably would have, at least standing at the doors. At least at, at the entrance. At the entrance of it. It very well could have been set up around around the hall, uh, around the, the, the couriers. I, I, jump in there and tell because I'm, I'm like, Anyway, we we tore this we tore this thing down. So first and foremost, and I don't want to start at the last or in the middle with, the, with these these uh, illustrations or uh, examples. But everything they're wearing, he's making reference to each thing that they have, and he's putting a piece of the gospel with it. And so, and, and oh, there it is. Look at that. The thing, the, the thing he did, he does, he lists them in the order that the soldier would have put these things on. So, in fourteen was the first mention of any anything, and it was the belt of truth. That's a good it says, gird, gird up your loins and, and put on the belt of truth. Well. The normal attire for anybody in that day was a long something. I don't know what it, but it would like a robe. Like a robe. a robe. I'll just say a robe. The first thing the soldier had to do was grab that, pull it up, and they would cinch a be their belt around it to hold it up out of the way so that they could maneuver. So that that was the first thing they put on. That's the first thing we need to put on. It's a belt of truth. And what truth are we talking about? God's word. God's word. The truth of the gospel. Danny? Something we've read about this, we heard about it in church, and I think we discussed it in class. Uh, your loins. Uh, it talked about the bowels in the Old yeah. Testament. And it talked about, there's a talk about the kidney and the liver. The bowels are the home of the emotions, fast, uh, compassion and sympathy. The kidneys are the home of uh, what they consider. The home of temperance, emotion, prudence, vigor and wisdom. And the liver is the home of your temper and your character. These are things that are best if we apply truth to them so that people see our character in truth, our wisdom in truth, our emotions are guided by truth these things like that. And that's just a, a, a way I looked at it when it said gird up your loins and you're girding them with truth. So you're retaining, restraining yourself with truth. These characters of principle with truth. Right? 14 also mentions the breast, breastplate. breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? Well, the only thing righteous about us is Jesus. Thank you. But righteousness, one, <coughs> one of the ways I look at righteousness is having the right heart. If, you, if your heart is right, that's, that's a good step. So the breastplate, <coughs> breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate protected that. The breastplate covered from their neck down to their waist. And it covered some of the organs that Danny was talking about, but most of all it covered the heart. So it's, what it's telling you is take up the breastplate of righteousness. Everything you do, do in righteousness and protect your heart. Because that if anybody's going to go after you and, and, and it's going to go at your heart. They're going to have to think, think about it as, as a hunter. What do you aim for? You're doing fine. Well, uh, uh, in the lesson it says under the first page of righteousness, it says, Satan will seek to accuse us, but he has no ground for his accusations because we have been forgiven and we have the righteousness of Christ. So, so you have to claim that. It comes at you, it's like, I've already been forgiven for that. Go away. So, so, I, and I think I've said this before. The, the first time that I ever looked at these verses, and I, and I kind of thought I studied them. 
And then I thought I, I remember reading something else somewhere, and, and I've never been able to find it, so my mind was just working in two different directions. But I, I guess it was a frame of mind. It, it, it depends on what frame of mind that you're in, that any of us that any of us are in. The Bible will speak to us based. I'm not saying emotions, based on what, and it could be emotions. It could be. But based on the frame of mind you're in, you may read something like I never read that before. I never got that before out of that verse. But when I read when I read that, maybe, maybe I've slipped up in my old age a little bit, but I I've always said that I, I'm not I am not a pessimist. I'm not. I mean I am an optimist to, to sometimes to a fault. But I read that when I read that the first time, I, I did not take any part of that as a defensive posture. I, I, I put that on to go to, I, I want to go to battle. I'm going to war. I'm not going to wait on it. I'm going to it. And in, in, in my mind over the period, of, over time has changed. Everything there that we're looking at is for defense, except one thing, and that's that sword. Then in a sense, everything else is could be, and even the sword is for defense, but it's mostly for offense. Offense. I thought Becky was going to say it. One, one of the things that caught my mind in the lesson where it says we don't fight against, uh, somebody tell me the verse. Nation, blood. Nation, blood. We fight against principalities. Say it, Becky. Read it again, Becky. Fight against principalities. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Do y'all do y'all believe that? Oh, absolutely. Do you, do you believe that there's demons? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Give me okay instead of absolutely and yes. Give give me an example. It, it is a de is a demon one of those scary looking dudes that's got the horns and the it, 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 a, a, a evil or demons can come at us from any direction. Yes. I'm not going to say one thing. And don't forget about their minions. They come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked over at Billy and I, got, and I thought, minions, here, here he comes with here it. Here we go. Here he comes with it, man. They That's come, true, though. They come clothed in all manner. Yeah. That's exactly what it That's exactly right. Well, what, what, what you think about it, think about it. They're, they're, one of their major jobs is deception. Yeah. So why, why would they come at you, some big, ugly, scary <laughs> creature? Well, 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 did you miss that sermon? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we just have a sermon? Right, it's called Righteous Judgment. Yes. I, 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 but I may not right, so I don't use it anymore. Yeah, but you know, it's like they come clothed in all manner. Well, you know, they come clothed in demons. They come clothed in demons. They come clothed in Be Becky, Becky says that, and I mean, I, I think for us, from and I and I looked at Billy. Billy kind of said it. Um, I think when you hear the word demons, you know, you conjure up in your mind the stuff that we see on TV. Okay, so so there's there's a cure for that. It's Ephesians. Here we go. It's Ephesians one, and I'll have you know that I have the King James version on this. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so Ephesians 1.20, and it's talking about which, in which, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him on his, at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Something above us, something there above us or somewhere, but they're not in the heavenly places when Danny read that. For above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name with his name, not only in the world, but also which is to come. And you can read all the rest of those verses that come in behind it. But but Jesus or Paul declares that in Ephesians 1, 20 and 21 about those principalities and those powers and those things that we we ourselves 
and I say this very um, loosely, not loosely, that I, I may, maybe I need to tell that we have no power to fight them on our own. Absolutely. None at all. So who do we have that fights? Jesus. Easy, Christ. easy, let me say it. Who do we have within us? There it is. There it is. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll learn something else. Yet. And, and, you know, we may be, it may be one of these other, other. Anyway, the power is being controlled. Christ, is, Christ has settled all of that. He's reigning on high. And he's far above all that stuff that we have to deal with. All that stuff that we have to deal with because there's a couple of reasons. Because he's Christ. And the second thing is he suffered through it just like we've suffered through it. So he knows exactly what it's like. We to do, do what we do. The war is won. The battle, the battle. But the battles continue. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we keep in our heart is the, the war is won. It's over, said, and done. He defeated the grave. And when he defeated the grave, that's it. That, that's it. But the battles continue because Satan and his demonic fleet are going to continue to try to turn people away. As long as you're a believer, the battle is won. I mean, not the battle, the, the war is won, but you do have to you do have to put this on every day. Each each one of those pieces of equipment are standing for something. And it's what he's what he's telling you is each one of those pieces of equipment withstand certain things or prepare you for certain things. The feet of peace, good foundation. If you've got a good foundation, you can withstand somebody coming at you like a football player wearing cleats. He plants his feet and sits squatted in a certain position to power stance. Same thing with the feet of peace. You've got a good foundation and, you, and you've got the peace of God in you. You know what the outcome is. So, so one of the, one of the things, and and I, and I I can't help it because I'm I'm teaching two or three different directions. I'm oh, sorry, look, Danny been steady doing this. <laughs> Go ahead. To go back to what he asked in the very beginning about the breastplate, right. he asked about righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is blamelessness, and our heart is a seat of what what they looked at as our spirit and our soul. And the only way our spirit and soul can be blameless is through Christ. So our breastplate is actually Christ, it's our salvation. So what you were saying about Christ sitting in the high place, he's the one that protects us. He's our mediator. He's the one who died for us. He's the one who provides our salvation for our heart, which is the home of our soul and spirit. You know, he's, he's, our, he's our savior. But... So he, he is our breastplate, which that actually kind of symbolizes our salvation of our spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I like the, the symbol about the salvation because actually all, all of these, one, two, three, so all, all of these, it's, it's all him. Um, so, I, I, and, and, it's, and, we're, and we're going in a good direction. But so, here's, here's things, and I've said this before. So if you look at Philippians 4.8, this is what Philippians 4.8, Paul, Paul again. It says, finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good, of a good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. The, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. How do, how do we fight that constant? We, we need to be thinking on the right things. All day. All, it, 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 that, that's hard to do. So it, it, you say, well, I think the, the, devil, the devil's attack is 24-7. To, and I, I've always said it, and I just said it again. There's maybe times in when it's not, okay? It just depends on where it's at, which means at any given time, 
when the bad stuff comes at us, and I, again, we've been around long enough to know we know the wise. We really, we really. I'm going to say this: we we should have the answers because we should have the answers. We know the wise. We have the answers, and the answers, the answers, and the wise are: we're going to be attacked. We're going. It's going to happen for about for for a couple reasons: to be tested, to be tried, or we're going to have to battle it because we we've, we've failed and we've been tempted into sin. But what, if we think on these things, Paul, listen, if we think on these things, that helps us. I have another one, and y'all have heard it before, and it's Ephesians, it's Ephesians 5, 19. And this is, y'all can say it's more, but this, this one's for me. Because I read this, it had to be, I don't even know now, I don't tell, I've already told y'all, I've I got to do my life in decades now. Um, I think I've been teaching for close to 30 years. Um, but at this one, like the first few years I was teaching, Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourself, where's Melissa? Yes. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Think on the good things. Think on the right things. You say, well, that's just, that's just to think on the good things and be happy, merry, happy people. No, just think on the good things, but think on the right things. And when your mind's really going in the wrong thing, I, 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 I mean, she can tell you right now, I like, I like music. And I, I'm, I'm not too far. There's, I'm trying to think of stuff that I don't like. And there's, I think, I think there's uh, uh, heavy metal, hard rock. I can't oh, listen to that. Rap. And uh, I'm not to listen to a little rap. But, mm. No, but you should read the next one. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If I throw a verse at you, I, I, I would challenge you. If I throw a verse at you for the sake of time, I would tell you to read read the whole chapter, okay? Mm -hmm. But at least read the something before it, read something mm -hmm. after it. But the the... The whole point that I'm trying to make is, is we there's a lot of armor out there. That that righteousness that Danny was just talking about, the the <clears throat> the, the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation, sword the of the spirit, the shoes, the shoes. That hit, that got me this morning. I, I don't know. I was just looking at something else this morning because we were up early, and uh, that's the first time I'd ever noticed about the, the cleats on the sandal. So, I mean, that sandal's been talked about a lot, but those soldiers had cleats made into those sandals to where they had they got a grip, okay? The, the sandals were a half, a toeless half boot that was laced up and had a guard on the shin. And on the sole of it, it had cleats built into it. They weren't made for running. They were made for marching and a strong foundation. It, it said, and I had another visual pop in my head. Have you ever, guys uh, and ladies, if you've been there, um, have you ever happened to go fishing down around Texas City or even on the jetties around on the rocks? Is it pretty slick? It's pretty slick, isn't it? Well, yeah, how many of you been on a boat ramp? Yeah. So I, a, a, a person that I knew that Daphne and I grew up with, uh, they live up in Oklahoma now, Kay, Kay and Dwayne, I think they live in Oklahoma. Um, the first time I ever seen him, he, he had got a pair of old work boots and he had drove t tacks through the sole of them to where they were sticking out the bottom so he could have good grip on those rocks when he went fishing. And when I read this thing about the, the, the shoes, it said, it said um, <clears throat> they were able to set a firm foundation. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. it, my, 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 um, um, I Googled the song, um, my, my feet are planted on solid ground. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I used. Say again, Melissa. I'm standing on the solid ground. And it has that um, 
uh, standing on the rock, rock of ages, and also my feet are my feet are planted on solid ground. And and so and I and I listened to that song this morning. It 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 makes sense. We can't again illustrations. There's another word in this lesson the guy used. It wasn't illustrations. It wasn't uh, whatever. The, it wasn't metaphors. Whatever. It, whatever it was. But that's not the first time I heard that. The first time that I, that I looked at this lesson, I strictly thought about armor. That's all I was thinking about. But each one of those pieces of armor represents something that it, it, either neither one of either one of them you can't do without them. You have to have them all. Each one of them, like. The shield of faith that goes into the shield of the Roman soldier, it talks about withstanding the fiery darts. Well, the way the Roman soldier soldier's shield was made, it was wood with, with hide over it. And it was designed to take flaming arrows and let them stick there and burn out. That was the physical design of the shield, that they could get behind that when the archer shot at them. That's why Paul used it as uses the shield of faith to withstand the fiery darts of the devil. And it actually says quench the quench darts. Mm -hmm. So it's each each piece of this the whole the whole point of the lesson was we can't stand against this on our own. We are not able to withstand the devil and his minions by ourselves. But we don't have to. We're given all of the pieces of armor, all everything we need, we're given if we'll just use it. You know, Paul was in prison facing death. And God revealed that to him, a visual revelation of what he Get your shoes, what happens? Yeah. Slip slide away. That's a song. Yeah, no, you had to do Slip slide away. You just had to do it. You forget about the helmet of salvation. Where are where you, where you? Your head's wide open. You forget about the shield. You forget about the breastplate. You don't low and low up, gird up your loins. You trip all over yourself trying to. You need all of them. Have you fallen away? First of all, you've got to have the helmet of salvation. Or you're not even God's warrior. That's right. And Thank you. So, but if you run around out there you know, as a soldier and all you have is your helmet, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to die. <laughs> now, the first, but, you know, that's, I wanted to mention about the sword. You know, he talked about it being the only uh, offensive weapon, actually. Well, it's not. But uh, you, you use the sword. And the sword, to me, I referenced it like a video game because I got all my kids and they all into that stuff. But you use that sword and you're, you got like your shield of faith. Your faith, your sword, your, I mean, your shield is only as strong as your faith. Somebody's faith can be really, really great. You think that shield will withstand anything, but they may have that one little thing and it just, boom, their, their shield is just wiped out by that one little thing, you know. But the thing is, we can go get our we can get our shield repaired just like that, you know. Once our faith goes down, we can pray and we can do what we need to do to regenerate our faith to get it all back. Just to, you know, that happened, Lord. I'm sorry. Forgive me, you know. And we can just get our faith back. But we need that sword. It can level up. Does, that, does it everybody know what the reference, the sword reference is? It's the Bible. Yeah, it's the Bible. It, it can level up all of our armor. So a couple, couple, kind of like a video game. You know, the more you use it, the stronger you become, 
and the stronger it makes all your own. So a couple, couple things. Becky kind of mentioned a minute ago, and I was, I was wondering if she's going to say it. <clears throat> One of the other things that I, either he, it's in the lesson I thought, but I can't remember. That helmet was uh, designed to only look one direction, and that's straight ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, there's animals out there that have peripheral vision, and there's other animals that don't. And usually the ones that, that don't are looking for one thing, they're looking straight ahead. You can't see to the side unless you turn your head. One of, the, one of the things that's there is it also, it also that helmet, in a sense, protects your eyes. It protects what you see, okay? I, my, I contend that none of it is any good without the sword. Because where, where does everything that we know come from? It comes from the Word of God. Everything. The truth, the spirit, the, the firm foundation. The, the Bible is a defensive and an offensive weapon. The shield is a defensive and offensive weapon. Either way, you can, they can knock the fool out of you with the shield. Somebody, I've seen them, it, it, you, you can take the helmet off and kill somebody with it if you hit them hard enough with it. But the whole thing is, it's a whole illustration of saying, you have to have this. You have to have the truth. You have to have it. You have to have the word of God. How is it disseminated to us? Through the Holy Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. That's the word. That's where the truth is. That's where the, 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 the ability to withstand it, the faithfulness. Danny said it. He says it, said it right. We have, sometimes we have great faith. And one little thing, and it's gone. One it's little niche in the armor, and it's an opening. It's an opening. But the, 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 I guess to me, because of something else that we've been talking about over the last week or two, <laughs> I did not, I never noticed or I have I read a lesson that said or made the comment that, that them, them shoes had cleats on them. And unless you can stand firmly on the word, forget it. And how do you stand firmly on the word? word. You've got to get in the word. Mm -hmm. And how do you stay in the word? Staying in the word. How do you stay in the word? Get your mind full of the right things. Oh, no, oh, i got to be one of them holier than, than thou. No, you don't. Just get yourself in the right, get your mind where it needs to be. When it doesn't, when it's not there, hurry up and get it back. You don't want to leave it alone. And my, I, I was going to say, the mind's a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> it is. One of the things in the book that I think is pretty cool, it says even when we feel inadequate in our prayers, we are like oh. the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, but we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself make intercessions for us with groanings that we cannot that we cannot even utter. I just that's awesome. When you don't know what to pray, yeah. give it to him and he'll pray for you. What what, what book is that? Oh, no, no, no. The verses. <laughs> <laughs> the verses. Romans, it's Romans, uh, is it Romans 8? Y'all keep on. Mm, mm, mm. I told a lady today, she's looking for a class to go to, and I, I invited her, but I warned her. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, so Becky read them. No. It's Romans 8, right? That's what it says in the book. 26 and 27. Yeah. That's in the book? Yeah. I wish I, I wish I, I wish be nice if you to read the book. What did she say? He has a different book. I said if I'd have, if I'd have looked at that part of the book, that's what you said. Wasn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't have to look at the book. Talk about this. So, so I looked up I looked up Romans eight, or I actually I googled it because I didn't see it in the lesson, which I, which I did tell the lady today. She said, do y'all go by the book in that Sunday school? I said, I told her exactly what Kim said. I said, yes, we go by the book, not necessarily the lesson book. The book, we go by the book. We kind of sort of. Uh, likewise, the spirit who also helped with our, most people, Becky, just read 26. 
Likewise, the Spirit who also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But I love Paul. He's a good old Southern boy. Pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself making an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that search, and he that searches the heart, he that searches the heart, I think Danny said something about that. He that searches the heart knoweth what's in the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Even when we don't know how to act, because of that Spirit that's in us, he will cause us to think. Who's the only person that can read our heart? <laughs> God. And the Holy Spirit is yeah. part of the triad. I commented one time. I, yeah, we need to stop. I commented one time. So it had to be at least four years ago, maybe. Brother Ron made a comment one time. He said, yeah, every now and then I just pray to the Holy Spirit. And there was a few men in that room like, what? <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I'm going like, you don't need to do that. Okay? <laughs> I get it. Some people may not get what you're saying. I get it. I wish that I never said it to them. Because I guarantee you, when we can't, when we can't do it, which is most of the time, man, he can. Yes. He can. I don't know that he literally, he literally does pray for us, but I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one sitting in this room right now that there's been times you've prayed or there's been times that you spoke something and you actually maybe don't even remember what it was. Because it wasn't... <laughs> well, Alan, you're just getting seen. I don't know. Okay, that's fine with me if that's what you want to call it. It's just sometimes I need to shut up and let him do the talking. How many times have you have you been asked to pray and you prayed and when you got done you didn't remember what you prayed? <laughs> didn't seem like I just heard that. Uh, Tony closes, please. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your being in your house today, Lord Jesus. Uh, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to let us have these words in our heart so that we might not fall uh, to the enemy, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless the uh, preacher, and uh, we hear more of your word shortly. We ask you these things in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.